Hi, everybody. Welcome back to Joni's Stalls Field Notes. I'm Jonathan, and we are we were talking today earlier, kind of what we were going to talk about today. And uh, I've kind of realized we're going to unpack something that is very compressed. Mm -hmm. And uh, so we're going to get into it. We may not be able to do it all in one session. This may turn into something more or less, but mm -hmm. we're going to start out with what our concept of the day is. Um, and I, you hear pastors and you hear laymen talk about rewards um, and treasures in heaven and things of this nature. And we're going to kind of examine what are rewards, what are they, who gets them, and how are they distributed and how are they redeemed for credit, mm -hmm. shall, we, shall we say. So today we're going to be in Mark talking about two different types of people. Two, two, two types of askers of askers okay <laughs> the ones who have been in the fight battling in in their uh, role as a minister of the gospel or learners of of the learned uh, and then people who have absolutely no concept of, of the what's required or what's implied in mm -hmm. service in the Lord's kingdom. And those, those two types of people have expectations. Ones who have been in the fight and doing the work and grinding day in and day out to mm -hmm. serve the Lord, to be prepared to serve the Lord uh, inherently and maybe counterintuitively start to feel like they have a entitled reward or an expectation of something at the end. Uh, when we get to heaven, that we're going to have some kind of uh, I'll have more because I, I'll have more because I did more. Mm -hmm. And this other guy who didn't do anything, wasn't even in church very much. He's not going to get as much. And so we're going to kind of examine that concept and see where, see where it falls and where the chips fall. Um, there are a couple concepts I want to talk about just before we get started is you can be very, um, how shall I say it? You can feel like you're doing a lot for the Lord, okay? Mm -hmm. And that's okay, and that's good, and that's what he wants. Uh, he gives you those things to do. Um, and I just want to throw this out there that we do all the everything that we do, whether that's our skill set or our preparation or anything that has to do with a delivery of a service or a product in the kingdom of God came from God. It started there. He gave it to you. He develops it, and it's his. Mm -hmm. Okay. In the world, everything that we have, we quote work for. Uh, we earned it, but God gave us the ability to earn. So right. the concept I want to examine here and kind of, I don't know, bracket in our subject matter today is God gives it all. He owns it all. We own nothing. That's right. And we we have the pleasure of serving in his kingdom, but it isn't it isn't our kingdom, it's his kingdom. Right. And he invites us to the party. And if we say yes, we get to participate. And if we say no because we're too busy or we don't have the time or the energy, uh, I'm gonna offer this. God invites us, invites you mm -hmm. to the party. If you say yes, you get to participate in the outcome. If you choose not to or can't or there's not enough time, too much to do, um, God still gets it done without you. And that's not to, to leave you out. That's just to say God's going to get something done. That's true. And he's going to use you to do it if you're willing to do it. And if you're not or unable, he will find a way to get his will done on the earth. So rewards, treasures in heaven, those are all things because we participated at his invitation and we were willing to listen to him in the moment mm -hmm. to do his will. You know, this is such a great study because, you know, we kind of hear it as a, oh, you know, um, the Lord is coming and his reward is with him, right? We hear that he's coming and his reward is with him. We hear that 
you know, like he that cometh to God must believe that he is, and he's a rewarder of them that diligently seek him. We see 1 Corinthians chapter 3, the Bema seat. I like to start at verse 9 and carry it through 14, where it talks about wood, hay, and stubble, precious gems, gold and silver and all that, and the fire. It, go, it, it has to go through a fire process on that day at that judgment seat. And whatever remains is the reward. And there are some people, it even says at the end, it says they are saved yet as though by fire. So clearly there is a loss of reward. But as Jonathan said, we're going to be defining what these rewards are because there's a vast spectrum, not a vast, but there is a, a, a large spectrum of what that means to be rewarded. So um, we want to look at more over, we want to talk about the afterlife reward, because obviously if God is a rewarder, and not just if he is a rewarder of them that diligently seek him, but it has to be by faith. And I want to establish that right now, because it says he that believeth in, you know, that he is, okay, so you have to come to God believing God, believing his son, being established by faith, okay? So that is the entrance. That's the key that unlocks the door that you, you, that when you come to him, that he is, after that part, a rewarder of those that diligently seek him. That diligently uh, word means, obviously, you're committed. You are going, 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 going. So uh, I want to share with you something that I shared with John. And it was like, it was yesterday and I was in my devotions. I was reading the book. Uh, I was in the book of Mark, Mark 10, and I must have read it a million times, but it was so significant to me that it jumped out and I shared it with John and it has to do with uh, James and John. This is both in the same chapter. There's like John said, we both said there's two asking um, people. Okay. We have James and John, we have blind Bartimaeus and it's grouped together. And the same actions are happening and it really stands out. So starting right here, I'm going to read in, um, of course, Mark, and that is starting at chapter, uh, verse 35, 1035. And James and John, the sons of Zebedee, came unto him saying, Master, we would that thou shouldest do for us whatever we shall desire. And he said unto them, what would ye that I should do one for you? And they said unto him, grant unto us that we may sit one on the right hand and the other on thy left hand in glory. And Jesus said to them, you don't know what you ask. Can you drink of the cup that I drink of and be baptized with the baptism that I am baptized with? And they said unto him, we can. And Jesus said unto them, you shall indeed drink of the cup that I drink of and with the baptism that I am baptized with all shall ye be baptized. But here's the shutdown. But to sit on my right hand and on my left hand is not mine to give. It shall be given to them for whom it is prepared. And so I want to jump forward over to verse 46. And they came to Jericho, Jesus and his disciples, as he went out of Jericho with his disciples and a great number of people, blind Bartimaeus, the son of Timaeus, sat by the wayside begging. And when he heard that it was Jesus of Nazareth, he began to cry out and say, Jesus, thou son of David, have mercy upon me. Then many charged him that he should hold his peace, but he cried out the more a great deal. Thou son of David, have mercy on me. Desperate. And Jesus stood still and commanded him to be called. And they called the blind man, saying unto him, Be of good comfort, rise, he calleth thee. And he, casting away his garment, rose and came to Jesus. And Jesus answered and said unto him, he asks him the same question as James and John, what wilt thou that I should do unto thee? And the blind man said unto the Lord, that I might receive my sight. Jesus said unto him, go thy way, thy faith hath made thee whole. And immediately he received his sight and he followed Jesus in the way. Yeah, there's a lot of lot to unpack there. Uh, like Joni was saying, we see an example of workers going for it, getting after it with the Lord. And uh, then Jesus asked them a question, what should I do for you? 
And their immediate response was, well, you know, we've been working pretty hard. We're, we're, pretty, we're okay. You know, so when we get into the kingdom, we'd like to be on your left and right. All right. The coveted position. I want to be right next to you in, in the kingdom. And I'm sure Jesus kind of in, in his in, internal uh, humor smiled and said, wow, really? Do you, do you really want that? Because it's going to come at a high price. Mm. Can you drink this cup? Can you bear this cross? Do you want to do that? And uh, he kind of just says, he doesn't say no. He just says, it's not mine to give. So that's kind of funny. But when blind Barnabas was brought to him, he asked him the same question. What am I going to do for you? What do you want? What do you? Right. What do you want me to do Mm -hmm. for you? Blind Barnabas asked for his sight so he could see. And the two very contrasting requests of these folks was one who had no expectation and had nothing to offer Mm -mm. and had no expectations, but he knew something. He knew something that they didn't know. um, James and John didn't know that Jesus had things to give, but they weren't the kingdom. They were the, they were salvation and healing, and blind Bartimaeus got to experience firsthand a change in his life like no other he was able to see. But he answered him. He said, "Thy faith, remember?" And and by faith he got the answer. he got the answer. So again, we're we've been talking about this concept of in the moment, what now, what next, uh, attentive hearkening, obeying. Uh, listening to the Holy Spirit and acting on it. Uh, one of the things with James and John uh, had under their belt is familiarity. They understood Jesus. They had been with him. They got used to him. And so as as much as it was a joy to be around him, they were starting to think ahead. Um, and I'm sure this question was not just an intuitive question, but it was one that was blur- uh, lingering for a long time. Mm, mm-hmm. um, and just like because Barnab- it spoke of desire. Right. And blind Barnabas, he, he was lingering for a long time in his blindness. Mm-hmm. So you had, you got two concepts of folks that are, well, you know, I've been doing this a little while and I think I deserve something. And then another one who's going, man, I don't know if I'll ever, I'll ever get anywhere. I want to, yeah. And but I wanna- if I ever see Jesus, I know I will. But it's kind of interesting when you look at the concept, as John is saying, because you have two people, James and John, they're with Jesus night and day, eating, drinking. I don't mean drinking, you know, like eating, you know, living, living living with him night and day, night and day. And they see him. They're with him. Okay. And the other one, but they're blind. Get it? Like right. they're bl- they're the ones that were blind because they're just seeing what they can get out of it. They saw, like it was just as bad as Peter, where he said, "Though all men leave you, I won't leave you." And the Lord told him, he shut him down too, and said, "This night before the cock crows twice, you're going to deny me three times." In fact, all of them denied him. But the point is, is Bartimaeus is blind, but he sees Christ through faith. But you have to realize, too, that, see, Jesus has was in the area for a while, and his fame is spreading abroad. And so when he heard that he was leaving Jericho, he's thinking, this is my only chance. And he, can you imagine that? Like, And so we see a crowd of people that are saying, shut up, okay? But you see, that powerful faith in him, though he was blind, he knew. He saw the living God. And God said, receive your sight. And immediately he received his sight. And who was the first person he saw standing in front of him? Jesus Christ. And it said, and he followed him. Jesus said, go your way. He told him to go his way. His faith was the key that unlocked the door. But instead it said he followed him. Yeah. Yeah. And how many places in scripture did faith change their life? Mm. The, The one with the issue of blood just touched the hem of his garment. And he, he felt virtue had left him, and he stopped everything mm-hmm. and said, who touched me? That's right, and he stopped for blind Bartimaeus. He stopped. And see, here's another thing. The disciples and James and John were with Jesus. Bartimaeus heard about Jesus. And can you imagine sitting there? You can't get up and go anywhere. You Somebody may have to take you, but 
You don't know where to go. You don't know how to find him. And there he, he hears him walking by with wow. a group of people. And, and now's my opportunity. How many hungry souls do you know that are hungering for something for, from an affliction, either in their body or in their lost mm-hmm. state? If they met Jesus, how, how faith filled they would be. So, man, <clears throat> um, yeah, let's 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 dig into this a little bit <laughs> further. Joni's keeping me on track here. <laughs> uh, yeah, because I, I know this is going to be a bigger, bigger uh, to unpack than we probably have enough time to do in one session. But um, I want to talk about uh, the crowns. We've heard about crowns and we've heard about treasures. Uh, crowns of righteousness. Um, I'm going to have, jo- she took some really good notes here and I'm going to have her go over them with you. All right. Listen, there's five crowns and this is for the overcome. Actually, uh, yeah, five crowns. Okay. Now there could be more crowns. They're just not mentioned. I mean, we're just, we know right now there is five crowns mentioned. And so I'm just going to go over them real briefly because see, Real quickly, James and John, remember, they were projecting, they wanted, it was almost kind of demonic or satanic. Remember when Satan in Isaiah 14, when it said he looked upon his beauty, he became lifted up in his pride and he looked up into heaven. He saw the throne of God and he said, I will sit on that throne as God. Remember he said that, that got him into trouble. So notice the words when Jesus says, what will you that I should do unto you? And they said uh, that you would do whatsoever we desire. Remember, that's what they said to him, that you would do unto us whatsoever desire. That's when he said, well, what do you want me to do? That we may sit on your right hand and on your left hand in glory. That is such an epitome of pride. They're almost kind of like trying to beat the other disciples to the punch. Like we'll ask them, we'll get it sentenced on there because they saw themselves in such a wrong light, almost like the rich young ruler who went away sad because he had much riches. He he didn't want to, I mean, there was a blinding there. So anyways, I'm gonna go into these five crowns real briefly because there are crowns to be had. And so right here we have the crown of righteousness. This is a crown for everyone who loves the appearing of Jesus Christ. That can be found in 2 Timothy 4, 8. For a crown of righteousness is given unto me and not unto me only, but to unto all them that love his appearing. And so, um, and this is really for every righteous person through grace by faith, but you have to love his appearing. It's very definite. You can read that. Like I said, 2 Timothy 4, 8, uh, 2, the incorruptible crown. That's 1 Corinthians 9, 24 through 27. It's a crown for people who brought their body into subjection. They disciplined their self, self-control, meaning they just persevered that no matter what, no matter what their circumstances, no matter what was being blasted against them, that they just kept going. They disciplined themselves. The crown of life. uh, You can read about that in James 1.12 and Revelation 2.10. A crown of life is for people who have patiently endured trials, testings, persecution. It is for people who bravely confront persecution for Jesus Christ, even to the point of death. Uh, the crown of glory, you can read about that in 1 Peter 5, 2 and 4, and it coincides with Mark 16, 15 in the Great Commission. So the crown of glory is for every person who feeds the flock. Of course, it mentions pastors, apostles, prophets, evangelists, teachers, ministers, but really it's for everybody who's carrying out the Great Commission. I don't care who you are. Jesus doesn't care so long as you're spreading the word, okay? And last, the crown of rejoicing. So this is in 1 Thessalonians 2.19. You could read that. And so the crown of rejoicing will be our crown where God shall wipe away all tears from their eyes. There shall be no more death, nor sorrow, crying. Neither shall be there be any more pain for the former things will have been passed away. That's Revelation 21.4. So those are just the crowns. And there are 10 overcomer rewards. So there's, see what I mean? It's a, it's a spectrum of rewards. And so I'm going to go over them very quickly. There's, you're going to be given permission to eat the tree, eat of the tree of life, uh, receive a crown of life. You're going to be given access to partake of the hidden manna. You'll receive a white stone with a new name engraved upon it. 
You'll be granted power over the nations. You'll receive the morning star. You'll be clothed in white raiment. You'll become a pillar in the temple of God with the name of God, the new name of Jerusalem and Christ's new name engraved upon you. You'll be granted permission to sit with Christ in his throne. And at the end of the book, the last part of the letter of Jesus Christ, he says, and he that overcometh shall inherit all things and I will be his God and he shall be my son. Wow. So we have five crowns and 10 rewards that we know of. That we know of. <laughs> that we know of. And um, a lot of folks don't even think about that. Maybe it's the first time you've heard that uh, presented. Uh, yeah, you, you will receive crowns for living out the cr cr Christ traits, uh, God traits, as I like to call them. Um, and they're for specific things and specific rewards. Mm -hmm. uh, and like I said before, we, there's two types of receivers of rewards. The ones who, ex, uh, who are working and living, working with the public, so to speak, uh, and they're living and they're working. Those are, that's one type of receiver of rewards. And then there are those who expect to be rewarded. And they have an expectation of, of receiving a crown. And that's the whole point of their uh, developing uh, is so that they can have rewards, that they're working for something. And I want to kind of back back up from the, the concept of uh, effort and reward. Okay, there is an effort and there is a reward. And they, they go hand in hand in two places in the world because we work and we get rewarded we achieve and in the kingdom where we work and get rewarded and receive crowns and, and rewards um but it, it there is a temptation in that to take your focus off of the gift of life and become a pursuer of possessional things so um i'd say for the most part we're living in a world where it doesn't know anything about God. And we're going to come across people who do uh, not know anything about the Lord. And you get to be the person who gets to wear one of these crowns in interacting with them, gets to partake of a reward because you interacted with them. You know, I do want to say just really quick that the crown of life or uh, crown, crown of uh, life uh, that is the one that is the martyr's crown. So I just wanted to just say that because I didn't mention that that's a martyr's crown. Not very many people will get that. Um, that stands unique by itself. But there's something that John said earlier today, and he talked about people who see the pastor. They see the worship team. They see the big missionary. They see this, these big, you know, kind of like visual things. And they feel that they're, well, they're obviously going to be, and not, and not with it, you know, like, well, they're going to be given, you know, rewards, not that kind of a spirit. We're talking about like, there's people that genuinely feel like, wow, you know, like they're really doing something big and look at how they're up there every Sunday and they're preaching the word or look at the worship team. I mean, they're so anointed and they're singing praises unto our God and leading everybody in worship. No, they're going to obviously get some big rewards and I'm never going to be able to have any of that. And, you know, that's really a consensus of the heart of many people. That's what you were saying earlier when we were talking and it just was so compelling to me. And, and there are, God invites us to the, to do the work of the, of salvation every day. He invites us not only to come unto his son, to receive his son for salvation, but now that we've received the Son, we've become a voice of God, the voice of hope, the voice of victory in the world. And um, lots of times, and I and I think I've I think I had this happen to me. Um, little little, and it may not have been, but I'm going to just let kind of open my you know pull the curtain back on me for a minute. The other day I was going to work and um, I was hungry. And, uh, you know, you can kind of tell what's happening in your life if, you know, like I said, I've, I have a half an hour or an hour to drive. And the bad thing about that is I get to talk to myself for that long. So it's. I like it. <laughs> yeah. But, you know, um, 
I'm not I'm not I'm not a hundred percent pure and uh, holy, and there's no halos if you can see, and there's no halos over my head. And I had the occasion to kind of you know what is going on with, with this issue or that issue, not in the moment, not 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 praying, not asking the Lord for what to do next, not what next, not obeying. And I pulled into a little store and I went in and there was a guy I thought was a homeless person standing in front of the building. And I'm like, don't even talk to me, man. I don't even want to, I, I, I've got to get to work. I've got to get in here. I, have time. I don't have time. And um, I, I sat down in the, in, the, in the store there and I, and I started to get feel convicted. And so I said, Hey, well here, pay for this, for this, th- that homeless guy out there. And uh, so I've, I kind of thought I redeemed, re- redeemed myself a little bit. Here, I told the store manager or the guy there, give this to that guy. And uh, so so we could eat, right? So I walk out after I'm done, and I went out to look for him. And he was nowhere to be found, nowhere in sight. Mm. And I'm like, wait a minute! That guy was just lingering and stuck on the on the porch out there, and now he's absolutely gone. So did I just encounter an angel? Did I just blow it, entertaining an angel? Uh, maybe, maybe not. But you know, I it got me to thinking that if I did, I blew it, and that my thinking was stinking at that moment, right? And so I got to. I got to experience it firsthand the uh, the conviction that I kind of maybe God was working through me to do something for here, and I blew it, and I'm starting to get down on myself. And there's places in what we're in, the, in these scriptures that um, God talks about wiping away our our tears and our sorrows, mm-hmm. and we've kind of brought some regret, you know, along the way. Well. When we're standing before him, he's going to wipe away those tears. And I will probably have to say to him, man, I don't know what happened that day. I, I know I totally blew it. Yeah. And I'm sorry. And then he's going to look over and say, no, 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 it's okay. I, I invited you to participate in that moment, but I still got my victory. I still went in spite That's of right. you. I still got, I still got the, I got the win. Beautiful. So even if we don't participate in the moment, it isn't like God says, you, well, you know, I had something for you, but now I'm pulling it back. No, yeah. I'm going to continue forward to the next thing, to the next person, the next delivery, the next uh, over uh, the next victory with someone, whoever, whoever will come, let them come and whoever will participate, let them participate. And I will give them a satisfying uh, uh, reward a reward of a crown, a reward of uh, something that, wow, if I hadn't obeyed, maybe that circumstance would have been turned out differently. Yeah. But we get to participate in a willing and invitational way that God says, if you don't participate, I'm not going to, it's not because I'm mad at you and I'm, I'm disappointed in you. I, and I, here, would you like to help me on this one? No? Okay. Would you like to help me with this? Mm-hmm. Oh, okay. Let's do it. And so don't get beat up. I'm telling you, the, the purpose of this conversation is to say Jesus gives us everything we have to work with. He is the outcome that we're seeking. And if we do, if we participate in the moment, he will reward us with the knowledge that he was with us and that he he did invite you to the party and you said yes. That is beautiful. You know, I want to share a little dream I just remembered in my mind. I had so many years ago and um, I don't even, I just, ha- I'm just going to share. I had this dream. It was real brief. It was, it was uh, nighttime and I walked, um, I was walking and I came upon a group of people and they were all friendly and they were sitting at a picnic bench in a park. And I knew that they were all, I I don't know if they were all Christians, but they were all friendly and they were laughing. And, um, I just felt like I was supposed to join them. And, and so we were, I, and I, I think if I can remember right, I do believe they were all Christians. And I think that was what I was enjoying, you know, like we were fellowshipping in the night, you know, but ever there was so much joy and everything. 
And somebody said, wait, before everybody leaves, because I think I was saying, like, I got to get going. And they're like, wait, wait, let's take a picture. So somebody um, stepped in front and everybody grouped together and they took a group picture. And right when I was going to go, the person said, wait, here's the picture. Like for some reason it was already developed, you know, and they handed me a picture and I looked at the picture and I looked at myself and there was a little crown on my head. Like it was just this tiny little crown and you can see like little gems in it and stuff. I mean, it wasn't some corny, dumb looking party city crown. I'm just telling you where I was like, what's that on my head? And it was this little crown. And I feel like that was the Lord showing me that, you know, as his children, as sons and daughters of God, that there are rewards coming for us. We are children of the great King. And yes, there will be loss of rewards on that day. It will be the posting of the exam grades. Um, you could read that in first Corinthians chapter, like I said, three, I'd like to, we'll say, you know, nine through 14, 10 through 14. Um, and there's going to be losses. Um, I do believe that's why there is going to be sorrows and there will be tears at the Bema seat of Christ, which is the reward platform. Um, and it'll be okay. And I do not think that the people who will have loss of rewards are going to be dumped off into some shadow at the back end of heaven where everybody else gets to be over here. I don't think that there's going to be, not, I don't think, I don't believe there will be any tears. Now, there's going to be a moment where it says, he says, even the former things you will remember no more, because there's going to have to come a point after the great white throne judgment that he has to erase all of that for to go into all eternity. So he, at the end of the day, he is the King of Kings and the Lord of Lords. And he invites us to believe in him through faith so that we can have eternal life and have our next day, our best day off with him forever. <laughs> yeah. And it, it is, it is so we're here to experience the love of God and to, and to kind of break off a piece of it and give it to somebody else. Mm -hmm. And lots of times we're just not, you know, we're not in the moment, but it, the more that you are, the more prepared you are to be in the moment, the more you start your day uh, becoming unoffendable and you're working through that process, the more often you're going to experience the joy of the Lord. And that is the thing that renews our strength. And be thankful. All right. I just feel really, really in my spirit to say above everything, give thanks unto God, be thankful unto God. Always remember to give God thanks for everything, for every season. Remember he says, for there is a time for everything, for every, for every purpose, for every season of God under heaven. And God's working out purposes in your life in these different seasons. And I just feel very strongly that he wants me to really convey that to everybody is give thanks unto God in everything. This is the will of God in Christ Jesus concerning you. And I feel also to say that that little picture that I was shown in that dream, I couldn't see on my own, but it was this little invisible crown. I can only see by the Holy Spirit showing me that that's how God sees all of us. He gets a kick out of us when we, as as we do as parents, we get a kick out of it when our when our kids come up and ask us for help, ask us for fun, ask us for things. Yeah. He wants us to be. He wants to give to us the desires of our heart. Look, he gave me her. So <laughs> he gave me him. And listen, we are little children. It says, oh, what manner of love the Father hath bestowed upon us that we should be called the children of God. We're the children of light, not children of the darkness. And, you know, we serve a wonderful, wonderful God. No matter where you find yourself in life, you've been given a talent, whether it's one, whether it's two, or whether it's five. And everything you do every single day, like I was telling my friend, Francis today on the phone, I was like, Francis, I don't care if you fry your husband an egg. I said, do it with all your heart as unto God. That's a talent. Everything you do from the moment you open your eyes, remember you serve God right where you are. In invest in God, invest those talents. Right. And in Romans, we are, we are a living sacrifice, holy and acceptable and be, be, a, be a living sacrifice as often as it occurs to you to do so. And that 
you will have a great reward, not just the things that you anticipate in the future in, in, in the kingdom of God, but in the day that you live today, that you will find grace and that you bring grace and mercy to, some, to others. So thank you. And one last thing. What is the greatest reward? John? remember we were talking about what Abraham told, what God told Abraham in a dream. Keep t- yeah. What is the, what is what is the reward? He said, "I." He said, "You didn't ask for anything." He said, "Because you didn't ask for anything, except for the food that the king of Salem fed your men." He said, "Therefore, I have become thine exceeding great reward." A selfless act that produced a great reward. What could be greater? The reward of Christ. Amen. All right, you guys. Um, I believe that does it. So thank you so much for tuning in. Um, John and I so love doing this. We hope that we are such a blessing to you. We just want to get, offer you honey and milk. We want to be fruitful unto God and make you fruitful too. And just pour out of our cups into your cups um, that are hungry and thirsty for Christ. Um, also, uh, we want to thank you. A couple of people have already written to us about you know things they want us to talk about. And we're going to be going through that. Uh, we also ask you that if you've liked this video, then please share it. Tell everybody about the field notes. Um, like and absolutely subscribe. We thank you for everybody who's not even our subscribers to listen. We want to thank you for all of our Patreon supporters. Yes. Please pray about becoming a Patreon supporter because Amazing. we really have a vision of preaching. I mean, to me, my whole thing with Jonathan, our thing in agreement is that we would preach the kingdom of God and teach those things concerning Jesus Christ with no man, with all confidence, no man forbidding us. We want to be in the will of the Lord as we receive from Christ and give to you. So pray about becoming a Patreon supporter really is a huge blessing. We thank you so much. We pray that the Lord bless you. Be fruitful in everything that you do. Everything that you do, give us look up and give a smile unto God before you start your day and give him thanks. And uh, ask him what what next, and he'll give it he'll give it to you. Mm-hmm. Do the next thing, the next indicated step, the next blessing that you'll be for someone, and start right at home. You know, do that unexpected thing that they, you know, you you know, you know, you know. We <laughs> all know. We all know. <laughs> <laughs> That's a true test at home. <laughs> all right. We'll talk to you later. All right, you guys. God bless. Shalom. Have a beautiful weekend. Bye-bye. Bye bye. Bye.